Thank you, Yara. So welcome to the launch of New Jersey Voices for Paid Leave. We are so excited to have these discussions together to build collaborative power and share our stories of caregiving and needing to take leave. Um, we are calling this New Jersey Voices of Paid Leave. This issue brings up um, brings us together, but our conversations can be about anything that lifts up workers need to heal, recover, care, and thrive. So my name is Ashley Rogers, and I'm here as a paid leave mentor, graduating from the paid leave leadership program last year. Um, since we have a large group, if you could just please introduce yourself in the chat with your name, pronouns, or anything you would like to share about your family and your organization. Um, and then just a reminder to please mute during the discussion and we request you leave your cameras on so we could be able to feel more connected um, during our time, but feel free to take breaks when needed. And then while you're introducing yourselves in the chat, I'm gonna pass it to Nat to go over the objectives of the New Jersey um, Voices for Paid Leave. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Ashley. So welcome everyone. Um, I'm so excited to be with you all today. My name is Nat Mogay, um, pronouns they, them, and I'm a workplace justice organizer with New Jersey Citizen Action. New Jersey Voices for Paid Leave is a newly launched public facing forum that will give us all the opportunity to lift up our needs. So the forum includes everyone, um, that's including workers, parents, and caregivers, and it is led by organizers and mentors. So what does the New Jersey Voices for Paid Leave Forum provide? First, what we really want to focus on is build, building collective care and power through our movement for access to family leave for all. So what are collective care and power? We practice it every day. Collective care can look like spending intentional time with our loved ones, taking into account each other's needs, and prioritizing each other's rest. Collective power, on the other hand, can look like building power together through a vision of creating a world where we are cared for and where we care for one another. So by working together to make sure that we all have access to the care that we deserve, um, and by making these spaces more accessible and participatory, our communities will ultimately come out stronger and we could create the change that we deserve. So we're really excited to be creating a space and movement through collective power by approaching our work and voices through a lens of community care. So we'll also have the opportunity to influence power and build our movement through storytelling, brainstorming, and learning. And we'll have the opportunity to influence policy throughout that. Storytelling allows us to build an emotional connection and care with, with one another within our movements. Not only does it help us connect, but it allows us to utilize our lived experiences to move others to action and influence policy. By sharing our own experiences, reflecting together, and connecting to what our community has been called to, we can create change. Today, we're all going to get the opportunity to hear real stories from impacted community members and leaders. First, we're going to watch a short video focusing on paid leave advocacy. And after that, we will open the floor to others to share if you have anything you'd like to voice. You have to choose between your life and your livelihood. You really felt like you couldn't do anything about it. You kind of feel like this is the state of affairs and, and it feels hopeless. But then when I got connected with the coalition. She was like, you know, you could, you know, help use your story to help change life. It stunned me how the same story that I had lived through, it kept repeating. You know, I can't take back the time that I lost, but I can fight for my fellow Americans to not have to go through that. If you get together with people, your voice is louder than just one person. That organization, they taught me how to tell my story, how to organize. Our senators, our representatives, they work for us. It's time for us to make bold public investments in our care infrastructure. We know that it works because we have great examples. New York, now in Connecticut, Washington State. Care can't wait. We can't wait.
Yeah, so that's a video um, from the nationwide network that we are part of called Family Values at Work. Um, and I actually, uh, one of those peoples in the video, um, I was just on a trip with them in Atlanta um, last week. So it just really shows you um, how connected we all are, regardless of where we are. So I'm so excited to be connected to this movement and all these perspectives. Now I'm really excited to introduce to all of you our New Jersey paid leave mentors or paid leave leaders. This year we have Ashley Rogers, Alicia Jenks, Rebecca Four, Cecile Edwards, and Danica LaFortune as our mentors. Last year, they graduated from our 2022 Paid Leave Leaders Program. You could also see a picture of the Paid Leave Leaders Program to the left. Now I'm actually gonna pass it to Ashley to begin storytelling with the mentors, which will include hearing their personal stories um, when it comes to paid leave. So off to you, Ashley. Okay, so um, I'm gonna share um, my story. Um, in 2016, after losing um, my child's father, I found out that I was pregnant and going to be a first time mom. Um, giving birth is one of the joys that's supposed to be like one of the joys of life. It's supposed to be one of those exciting and um, moments that you celebrate. And I just remember I was really plagued with fear of knowing I was going to have to do it alone. Um, my only option at the time was give birth and reenter the workforce. Um, so really having that heartbreaking choice of having to choose money over your child. Um, if I had paid leave, I would have been able to choose to stay home and be able to bond with my child. Um, so this is what really motivates me um, to be a paid leave mentor. I now work as a certified community doula and parent coach. Um, and my focus is really maternal and infant mental health. Um, paid leave in New Jersey for birthing parents is so important to promote the secure attachments um, that is needed in early infancy um, for future health, healthy child development. Um, so this is why I choose to be a part of the discussions today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and now we could move on um, to can Alicia. We, can we give her a little like applause? Yeah, <laughs> applause everyone. You guys can unmute too. Woohoo! Yes. <laughs> you feel free to use your reactions. Um, and you know, we appreciate everyone um, you know, being here and being open to hearing these personal experiences. And thank you for sharing, you know, your your experiences with us. Um, so yeah, we we can move on to Alicia. Hi, my name is Alicia Jenks. Um, I just want to say, Ashley, I don't think I've ever heard your story and um, I'm really touched by it and I'm sorry for your loss and I can't imagine everything that you went through at the time um, and all the work that you're doing now is so important, as you know, and um, what a legacy you're leaving for your, for your child, really, and all of us. So I appreciate that. And um, so uh, I just wanted to, to say that before I started, um, I'm a paid leave. I was a paid leave leader last year. Um, I'm a mentor this year. Um, I'm, I also um, work. Alicia, I'm sorry. Can I just um, ask if anyone else here needs Spanish? Um, para estar seguro que otras personas aquí necesitan traducción, yo lo voy a poner en el chat si está bien. Um, bienvenidos todos. Estamos intentando de hacer que los reuniones siempre están disponibles en español. Cuando estamos más um, organizándonos mejor adelante, vamos a tener traducción en otro cuarto. So, pero hay otra persona que quiere traducción? Okay. Go ahead. So, um, I was, I mean, I'm a paid leave mentor this year. I was a paid leave leader last year. I'm extremely passionate. Um, about um, infant mental health. Um, I, I also am passionate about, um, you know, the health of uh, mothers and of, um, of, of everyone really. And so I, I didn't really prepare anything, but um, I, my story is that when I had my son, it was in 2007, he was in the NICU. At that point in time, my husband, 
had to go uh, back to work. There was no family leave. And uh, it was extremely difficult for me to deal with that on my own, going back and forth to the hospital. And um, I really had no support system. And um, I know now how um, that leads to lower outcomes for both the child and for the for the mothers and for the fathers and how it leads to postpartum depression. And um, I feel passionate about uh, about this cause because of my own personal experience and also because um, I've, I've heard of others throughout um, being part of this program and also uh, in my field of work. I work uh, for, a, um, for a nonprofit in Union County Child Care Resource Referral Agency. And uh, I know, I, I see firsthand how, how much um, when when folks are aware of this program, how it helps them. And when they don't know about the program and before this program was available, um, really how detrimental it was to everybody. So there, there's so many benefits and I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alicia. I really appreciate that. A round of applause, everyone, um, for Alicia. Um, I appreciate you sharing your story and um, just, uh, for being here with us today. Sorry, um, I'm, 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 I like the auditory really cool. cheering. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So with that, I think that we can move on to Rebecca. Hi, um, Ashley. I just want to say you shared something very personal the first time we all met and then tonight again. And I just really appreciate when you speak. Um, I have ADD and my brain is always going, but somehow when you speak, I just find this quietness. And I wanna tell you that you have this um, like really graceful strength to you. And I just wanna, your story is really important. And you know, if whenever you're comfortable, share it because there's something that anyone can benefit from, even if they haven't had the same exact experience. When you speak, I just, I find quiet and I am really present. So thank you for um, sharing your story. Sorry, my daughter's calling. Um, so I'm a paid leave mentor. I was in the program last year. And, you know, we often talk about paid leave with, unless you're dying, I can't speak to you right now. I'll call you back, I'm in a conference. Okay. Okay. So we talk about um, paid leave typically with relations to uh, birth, infants, and small children, but we don't often hear the stories about paid leave with relations to older children. You know, my child um, has severe mental illness and I'm a single parent with no family and run my own business. And so during the pandemic, my daughter had a particularly bad episode with you know suicidal ideations and I couldn't leave her alone. And she was 16 years old and no one thinks about family leave at that point in your child's stage. But as Yara knows, cause I was going through uh, the program cause she struggled for close to two years. Um, I couldn't take any family leave because I am a, um, a business owner, right? So I had to figure out a way to pay for our bills pay for her very expensive mental health, um, which was out of network about $2,000 or more uh, a month. And so for me, this is why it's important because I've worked for myself for a very long time and I've never had the opportunity to be able to take any kind of paid leave to take care of my family. Um, and so I think it's also important to think about that paid leave is not just for the beginning, but it could really be for any point in your child's um, life. And yeah, I think uh, someone just said before, it's like, it's really hard to have to choose between your child's well-being, being there for them. And in my case, it was like literally keeping my daughter alive. Like it wasn't an exaggeration or a hyperbole. It was literally keeping my child alive or not. And it's really shitty to be in that kind of situation and feel like you have um, no options, right? It's a pretty desperate feeling for a parent. 
So anyway, that's why I'm involved in this work. I've worked in WIC, I've worked in public health, I'm a board certified lactation consultant. And so I've been in the maternal child health space for about 18 and a half years or so um, in one way or another. And you know, I mentor new IBCLCs. I work um, to try and promote, I, to be honest with you, over the last several years, I've made a decision that I only mentor BIPOC and LGBTQI plus um, providers because really so there's so much underrepresentation. There's enough white IBCLCs to go around. Um, and so that's what I've been doing for the last several years. And I've trained about five providers in the last 15 months or so. And I hired one of them. Uh, an Afro-Latina woman, and I just recently uh, hired a newly minted Black IBCLC that I had um, mentored during the pandemic. So I'm really passionate about, as a white presenting person, I'm a Latina myself, right? I'm, a, I'm an immigrant, but I do show up in the world as white. So for me, it's really important to, since I have a tiny little bit of the stage uh, and the spotlight, it's really important for me to use that. Um, and bring other people on board so they can have the stage and they can have the spotlight. Um, yeah, so I'm passionate about this work and I appreciate everyone sharing their story. Every time I hear uh, one of your stories, it like pisses me off more. And so it fuels me to like, okay, I've got to get it, make this meeting. I can, I got to put my work aside, but it's really important to take the time and be a part of this. So thank you to everyone. Um, that's all. Thank you so much, Rebecca, and thank you for like highlighting those very, very important gaps um, that you know and people don't really think about when when it comes to paid leave. A lot of people just think that you're taking leave um, to bond with the new child, um, but taking leave for for mental health um, is very, very, very important. My my parents um, did that as well for me when I was in college and. It was it was a lifesaver. So um, I appreciate that, and I appreciate you also just highlighting those, you know, specific communities too. Um, so thank you, and um, you know, you, all of you always touch me. So I, I appreciate it. Um, so next, we will move on to Cecile. Good evening, everyone. Um, I apologize for being off camera. I'm not in a space where I'm. <laughs> can um, be, be on camera. Um, I am a paid leave mentor, went through the paid leave leader program last year. Um, and I come to this space as someone who is a postpartum doula and understand the ne necessity of families having access to time off, paid time off in order to rest, recover, um, and restore themselves after having a child. So one of my um, personal focuses is to one, extend the amount of time that people can receive. Um, and the other part that I want to highlight is that paid leave is also for people who experience intimate partner violence. And there is a intersection between interpersonal violence and um, postpartum um, or reproductive justice, whatever word you want to use. Um, and so I just want to highlight that um, as an important space to remember and understand that that is also um, something that people can do. I also want to finally just say that um, this past weekend, myself and Danica, another Paley mentor, we um, attended an event around maternal wellness this weekend. And you would be surprised at how many people we ended up talking about uh, paid leave at this event. <clears throat> and so many people were so intrigued by this topic and wanting to understand how to receive it from business owners, women who own companies, um, to fathers who want to know how they can um, get this benefit so that they can supplement and assist their families. Um, and another area that I'm very passionate about, too, is being able to ensure that um, business owners can have a way to pay into this fund so that they can also receive um, the service. At this point, it is not something that um, is possible, but there's a lot of lot more work to be done around educating people um, in small and mid-sized companies um, around um, this benefit. So, you know, glad to be here, and I'm happy that you all are here to learn more. 
Great. Thank you. And it's so awesome to hear that um, you and Danica were talking to so many people about um, paid leave over the weekend. And just, yeah, thank you for having those vital conversations. Um, very much appreciate that. Um, and yeah, now we will pass it on to our last mentor, um, Danica. Hello, everyone, and hello to my fellow paid leave mentors. As always, I appreciate seeing you and hearing you and being in spaces with you. So happy to be here. Happy to be here with um, our new leaders. Um, so I was a paid leave leader, obviously, last year, um, and a, a proud paid leave mentor this year. I come into this space um, learning about paid leave as a doula. I'm also a community doula and a community health worker. Um, when I first learned about uh, paid leave, um, I was a doula, so I was, you know, um, I especially serve uh, Black and Brown women in our state, um, and being able to share this information with them was just impactful, um, especially because when we say we're losing our women um, during childbirth, we're actually mean after childbirth within that first year of postpartum, um, which is coincidentally, um, as long as paid leave is, they can, you can use it up to a year after, so I then became a community health worker and finding out other ways that paid leave could be used. Like uh, Cecile said, I was definitely sharing it out, um, especially for uh, domestic use, uh, domestic abuse survivors, because I feel like that is just one of one category of people that um, don't even know and can really benefit from the access of paid leave. So I was just sharing that out. Um, and then I became pregnant in 2020 and I needed to take the leave myself. Um, in a pandemic, especially. So I was especially grateful to be able to do that. Um, when I did take the leave, it had recently increased from the six weeks to 12 weeks that, like it is now and from 65% to 85% leave replacement. So I was, I was especially happy. Um, like I said, it was during a pandemic and I experienced a lot of extra anxiety and paranoia because just being in the pandemic, being pregnant, being postpartum, during that time was very stressful for me. So being able to be home, um, not just to be able to take care of my daughter, but to take care of myself um, was very beneficial. Um, but I also shared a part of my story that I don't often, I forget to share as well, is that when I had my second son in 2011, I didn't know about paid leave. We've had this benefit since 2009 and I didn't even know it existed. And during that time, I ended up losing my job while I was out on my temporary disability. Um, I did get unemployment, but then when that ran out, things were really tough. That was a tough time for my family and myself. Um, I ended up becoming a stay-at-home mom because of that. Um, that was not intentional. It just kind of happened. Um, but knowing how my postpartum period went during that time and having that paid leave with my daughter was two very different experiences. Um, so I come, again, into this space sharing it because I know how much of a benefit it can be for um, new parents, new mothers especially. Um, but also knowing how detrimental it can be to be eligible for this benefit and not even know about it and not being able to use it. So welcome to everyone. Glad to work with you all. Um, the last time we met when we were doing introductions, I just noticed how many impactful roles there are in this room and in this space. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen in this next year. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. And it's all always lovely to have you join us. Um, and yeah, thank you for sharing that and highlighting that lack of um, awareness is like a huge, huge barrier um, and problem that individuals face when it comes to just accessing paid leave. Um, so we're really excited to hopefully, you know, get people more aware um, of the benefits that they can access. Um, so I'm gonna start sharing my screen again. All right, can you all see that? Okay, cool. All right, so why it's not letting me? Give me one second. Okay. Okay, 
Um, so now we're going to leave the floor open. Um, others are welcome to share their experiences or any questions that you have. Um, you can share that now or at our next gathering on Tuesday, April 4th at 6.30 p.m. Um, so yeah, if anyone has anything that they'd um, like to add, feel free um, to chime in, uh, raise your hand. I'll keep, also keep a look at the chat. But um, as as of our next meeting, we will be planning to meet every Tuesday of each month um, from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. So obviously tonight we did one um, Monday, but every other every month um, in the future is going to be um, on the first Tuesday um, from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. And as we um, gain momentum and get to know each other, we're going dis to discuss concrete actions we could take to affect change and ensure that all workers can afford to heal, care, and thrive. Also in the summer, we're going to have some exciting events. Um, we're going to throw a fun event where we can all come together and connect further. Um, to stay updated with that, you could visit njploc.org. Um, I will drop that in the chat. And you could take a look at the calendar that we have um, to register for our next meeting. I'll also be dropping the registration um, link in the chat for our April gathering. So yeah, um, so yeah. Actually, could... this is totally informal. So Rebecca, do you want to? My kids want to say hi. <laughs> no, but Rebecca, do you want to go ahead and say that that's a pretty big deal? Oh my God, I just, I, I, just, I can't. I just, this kid has been through so much, and she just perseveres. And yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just having a moment. I just wanted you guys to know that's why she kept FaceTiming me because she Oh, just wow, that's awesome. I just saw your message. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, for that's those that didn't see Rebecca's message, because Rebecca, you're a little, um, uh, verklempt is the word that came to my mind. Yep, yep. <laughs> but um, your daughter's going to intern at the White House? Yeah, she just Can got- she give us lecture. tours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. I appreciate the support and the good wishes for her. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Of course. Um, and yeah, if anyone else has anything that they'd like to, even like if it's, it doesn't have to be a story, just something that you want to celebrate collectively, um, feel free to chime in. But yeah. So we will be having these meetings every first Tuesday. If you have any other questions, you could feel free to reach out to me directly um, via my email. That's I'll put that in the chat as well. That's nat at njcitizenaction.org. And with that, we're actually... Um, I'll just stop recording and we'll go into our breakouts. Right. Um, go ahead and explain, though. Just yeah, stop so recording. we're actually going to be closing out our public part well, of the forum. So um, yeah, we're just gonna ask for um, just our mentors and our advocates to stay um, and 